YouTube is it going? The goat house is back. An NFL roster cut day. It's it's madness out there. It's pretty crazy. Uh, teams trying to get their rosters down to 53. Some crazy cuts. Maybe some aren't as crazy as they seem at first glance. A lot of confusing things. We're going to explain it all. There was some trades. No crazy big trade yet. There was some surprises out there. But I think a lot more is going to happen in the next 48 hours. We're going to break it all down. I asked you guys for your questions on our Twitter. Uh, we'll take a look at those at, towards the end. I'm letting them fill up because I just asked it a little bit ago. Let that fill up. Don't have my normal graphics for this video because it probably wouldn't be done until next year uh, because there's a lot to kind of talk about. So kind of recap things that we already went over on our Twitter, but kind of go more in depth. You're going to actually see me and hear my voice talking about it. Um, but over to our uh, Twitter. We'll kind of be taking a look at this. First, I made this post yesterday. We're keeping you guys involved in videos. I'm planning on doing a video before the season starts. Best player at each uh, at each position. I'll give you mine, and we'll see what yours is. A whole list of polls with options. You guys go vote. I'll put a link in the top of the comments of this video directly to that. Give us a follow on Twitter. Click that link and go vote. Much appreciated. Um, but yeah, if you're not following our Twitter, you're missing out. I mean, it was there wasn't a second I wasn't tweeting about something basically because a lot of things have happened. Real quick. Um, yeah, here's a little bit of a schedule for tomorrow. So I'm recording this on August 31st after the 4 p.m. deadline. This tomorrow, this is what what the NFL will look like. Uh, there will be that waiver claiming period where players put on waivers, re, you know, basically released waiver wise. If they're if they're a young enough player, they're waived and not released. But um, teams will go through and, and claim those players. So around 4 p.m. Eastern, we'll find out who who got who really. Um, and then after that, teams will put practice squads together. Then teams could begin placing uh, players on the short-term IR, injured reserve, three weeks. So it's a little confusing. But if players are put on there before th 4 p.m. tomorrow, they missed the whole season. So all the players that put on the IR already missed the whole season. You have to hang on to that player until 4 p.m. tomorrow. And then those players that you don't want out the whole season, but they need to go on the IR, you put on then. They miss three games. Bye week doesn't count. They'll miss three games, uh, and then they can come back. So then that won't co count towards the roster. Therefore, teams can start signing players. So that kind of brings back to the point that, um, you know, we saw a lot of surprising cuts. Uh, again, I asked questions. I'll get already 41 in there. We're probably not going to get to all those, but I'm going to let up. For some reason, I'm going to let it build up more. There's other things I want to talk about. Um, but there is, where was that other tweet I had? Not really organized. A lot happened today. So, uh, But the players that were, here we go. So, yeah, this could help some people. Veterans who are released don't go on waivers. They're veterans. You know, they can be signed by any team at any given time. Uh, but I think quite a few of them could end up back on their team. And you see kind of this bottom portion here that I was talking about. Uh, teams are kind of being smart. They're kind of finding a way around the rule because, again, they have to. Teams have to keep the players they want to put the short on short-term IR. They have to keep them for now. So they're going to release players. They're going to kind of make a secret deal that with those veterans that we're going to cut you right now. You're going to come back to us. You don't want to sign anywhere else, right? You know, so that because if you get rid of a young player, he goes to waivers. That young player doesn't really have a choice where he can go. That team doesn't have a choice. It's just whoever picks him up off waivers. So teams are being smart. Example: the Ravens released Pernell McPhee. Shocker, right? Surprise. You know, kind of surprised me at first, um, but then not really because you know that kind of saves saves roster spots here because they're gonna put. You know, J.K. Dobbins on the – well, they already did, but they're going to put Rashad Bateman on the short-term IR most likely uh, after the deadline tomorrow. That creates a roster spot. Pernell McPhee, you don't want to play anywhere else in Baltimore, right? Come on back. We'll sign you for the same thing. Maybe a little bit more money up front, you know, for helping us out. So that's kind of how that works. The Vikings released Everson Griffin. He's going to be back. They're going to put – you know, they're going to put somebody – Irv Smith's probably going to go on a list after tomorrow – uh, and they're going to bring Everson Griffin back. So it creates that roster spot. If they would have kept Everson Griffin and put a guy, uh, a younger guy out there, then he would have went to waivers. Somebody else probably would have got him. So it's pretty smart. That'll happen for, uh, like I said, Pernell McPhee, Everson Griffin, I'm pretty much guaranteeing those th those guys will be back on their team. Uh, Hoyer for the Patriots uh, will be back. Um, 
Jacob Hollister could go back to the Bills. A little bit of a surprising one. Uh, but, uh, yeah, kind of going over the news again. Uh, this is not like our normal videos here. I don't have, like, a strict schedule here. But, uh, yeah, this is a lot going on. I'm trying to process everything that, that was happening. So the Texans caught, kept all those running backs. Are they going to keep, uh, you know, are they going to claim somebody off waivers and then put somebody back, you know, or cut somebody then, I should say. Um but some of the key guys, probably what people are looking for me to talk about, some of the key guys that were cut, you know, Cam Newton, big news, Cam Newton was cut uh, earlier today, and that, that was pretty shocking. I was kind of for Mac Jones being the starter, but I did not think uh, I did not think Cam Newton should or would be cut, so that was surprising. The Patriots actually didn't even go and explore any trades or anything. They just, they just pretty much cut him. You could ask, will, will that be a guy that – uh, they'll eventually bring back like the other guys you're talking about, and I'm gonna say no because there's more dead money than there's more dead money lost than what they saved by cutting him. If that makes sense, so that wouldn't have really been a smart move. I, you know, I'm, I won't say zero percent chance to come back, but it's pretty damn close in my opinion. Um, you know, people bring it up for Cam Newton. People bring it up right away. The Broncos. Uh, Panthers is his old team, Washington football team, his old head coach and Ron Rivera makes sense to bring those teams up. I don't see him landing there. Any of those spots, uh, Panthers, I don't think that really ended well. They also, they also didn't view him as a fit in that new co with that new coaching staff, their system. So that's why they moved on from him. So that wouldn't make sense. I think they like Darnold and PJ Walker too. Uh, then Washington, Ron Rivera said they kind of crossed their mind. Uh, but they do have Fitzpatrick and Heineke, which are, Pretty good one-two punch there. Well, I guess you don't really have a one-two punch at quarterback. You get my point. Uh, and then Broncos. And I feel like the Broncos feel like they're set with uh, Teddy Bridgewater and Drew Locke. They like Drew Locke as their second guy. So I don't think that's the case. A team that popped in my head right away, it's not going to happen. But a team that popped in my head right away was the Chicago Bears, actually, because uh, back before they traded for Nick Foles, they uh, actually had interest in Cam Newton. But they end up going for, for Foles, uh, going that direction. Also... Cam Newton kind of makes sense as that bridge quarterback for Justin Fields. But they're already in gear. They're already set. Andy Dalton's going to start. He's that quarterback for Justin Fields. You know, Justin Fields behind him. Nick Foles even. for Nothing happened with Nick Foles yet either, so that was pretty interesting. But, again, more trades are going to happen. Uh, but kind of going back to Cam Newton, I'll tell you why more trades are going to happen in a second. But Cam Newton, uh, Texans make sense because they're kind of in what-the-hell mode, it feels like. Uh, we'll, you know, take him. He could be the starter. Um, you know, he could play well. They can get a compensatory pick out of him in the future. It's, it's possible. Um, so thought about the Texans. To me, he would make sense as a backup on a team that we're the only team we know is interested at this moment is Cowboys. The Cowboys need to back up pretty bad. Dak broke his ankle last year. And then I have more of the concern right now is the shoulder. It's not really a major concern. It's sounding better and better every week, but it's more of the concern than the ankle to me. Uh, you know, so getting Cam Newton would be key, I think. Does he want to be a backup, though? But he knows he maybe has a shot to play there, possibly, for, for unfortunate reasons or unfortunate thinking. Um, he would make sense as a Steelers backup, in my opinion. Uh, the Bengals desperately need a good backup. Will he go to Cincinnati, though? Um, that makes sense. You know, Vikings need a backup, but they have mainly because um, – Kirk Cousins unvaccinated. I don't have a stance on that. I'm just saying that's kind of a problem to the, for the team. Um, it's not really my stance. But um, Cam Newton kind of has the same situation as Kirk Cousins, so uh, they unlikely there. The, I, the Colts would make sense, but the same thing is what I just mentioned for the Vikings. You know, Carson Wentz was hurt. Now he's on the COVID list because, you know, he's not vaccinated, and then Cam Newton's kind of the same situation. Otherwise, it would make a lot of sense. But really like the Colts. Um yeah, so you look at the Texans, you look at the Cowboys pretty much. Uh, I mean, I can sit here and just list teams one after another. For They would love to have them. If there was different circumstances, they would love to have them as their backup. But I think less teams will probably be interested in what people are, are out there thinking. Um, well, yesterday, okay, back to why I'm all over the place. Back to why I think more trades are about to happen and why, you know, it's a lot of you out there probably like, oh, where's the – Where's the big trades, you know? And there might not be big trades ever, you know, really until the offseason. But uh, teams were kind of waiting around. Let's, let's see who cuts who because maybe we'd rather pick up this guy for cheap instead of trading for somebody. Some teams have the philosophy, hey, we'll just go trade for a guy, whether he'll be cut or not. Not every team's like that. We see kind of the same teams making deals. The Giants, the, the, the Broncos made a couple. Uh, Ravens, the Ravens made quite a few. So we have the same kind of teams. It kind of makes sense. Um so teams are like, let's wait to see if this team cuts this guy that we kind of got in our head that might get cut. We'll see who they keep. 
All right, now that we seen that happened today, we hit the deadline. Cuts are been have made, been made, uh, and now teams are going to. All right, well, it's time to deal. I want to get this guy. And some teams will actually still hold off. They will hold off until tomorrow's deadline. That we it's on your screen right now. Um, after the they maybe in their mind, okay, our guy got cut. We don't need to trade for this other guy because this guy that we want to get or this guy that's appealing all of a sudden got cut. Let's dive into waiver claims. Let's get him. Maybe they get them. They don't want to trade for somebody. Maybe they strike out. You know, they strike out. They don't get that guy. They don't get anybody on, on waiver claims here um, or the guys they need in this specific position. They're going to dive back into the trade market. So the next 48 hours, I'd say watch out for the next 48 hours for trades. Um, to me, that makes sense. We'll see what happens. It's kind of a big circle. Guys cut Teams cut guys down to 53 uh, then they're going to begin bringing guys back in from waivers. So that means they got to cut other guys back to 53. And then they're going to put guys on the IR. Um, you know, and, and then that r creates roster spots. And then they're signing guys back. It's just kind of back and forth. It's it's really madness at this at this time. So um, a lot's going to happen in the next 48 hours. Really, the sweet spot is the next 48 hours. So what else happened? The Vikings traded for Chris Herndon. We have... Eventually got the the trade details. Uh, yeah, there it is. A uh, little, little surprising that uh, as high as a as a fourth round pick was involved, uh, but they don't actually lose a pick. You swap a four for a switch six, so it's a swap deal. Jets come all the way up to the four fourth. Vikings go all the way back to the sixth. They get Chris Herndon. I think it's a good deal for both sides. I was a little surprised the fourth was involved. So I'd say definitely it would say more so the Jets winning the deal. Um, Herndon was pretty promising after his rookie year or in his rookie year, but then it was very underwhelming. Uh, new fa new <clears throat> new landing spot here, new destination. You know, new new team. So could change things around. The Vikings got pretty desperate for a tight end at that point. So. Um, yeah, it's good to see him in a new place. Like I said, the Jets get a fourth out of it. I don't think they'll use a tight end a whole bunch with the receivers they have. Zach Wilson, you know, you want to spread the ball out a little bit. You know, you got so many starting caliber receivers on their roster uh, that they're not going to – the Vikings use a tight end a, a, a ton. You know, a team like the Vikings, there's not too many more teams they're going to see you line up tight on the field. Um, more than the Vikings, really. And there, there's other teams like that, but you get my point. So and that's why it kind of made sense for both sides there. Uh, but that that's uh, – yeah, that's a situation with the Jets. That's a good situation with the Jets. You know, even though you don't gain a pick, you go up – fourth round's pretty damn valuable. So that's, that's pretty good. Um, that's pretty good for them. There was a, quite a few trades. Most of the other ones were kind of smaller. Um, we saw a lot of guys in the pup list. Tariq Cohen goes to the pup list. He's having a hard time recover from recovering from that injury, so he'll miss at least six weeks. Um, that's unfortunate. They do have a good l list of running backs, though. Uh, and then you look at uh, Stephon Gilmore was placed in the pup list. You know, I expected him to miss time, and I not expect him to miss six weeks. I was kind of thinking maybe he goes to that short-term IR, misses three games. No, it's going to be six. So for me, in my mind, good news, Mac Jones is a starter because I think the Patriots are better than Mac Jones. So I'm stock a little bit up from in my mind with the Patriots, and then they're going to lose Gilmore for six weeks. So that's kind of back down there. So that's that's pretty tough. Michael Thomas went in the pup. We expected that. David Bakhtiari, the Packers, the star left tackle, maybe the best left tackle in football, goes on the pup list. Uh, and th that's that's surprising as well. You know, he was did get hurt late last year, but surprising that he missed six weeks. Uh, what I think they'll do is they'll put the ultra-versatile, talented uh, Elton Jenkins at left tackle. Kind of excited to see how that, that goes because he is very talented, but I think he's a dominant, dominant guard. Um, and then uh, the rookie Royce Newman, who I actually moved from tackle to guard pre-draft, the Packers did the same thing, uh, and I think he'll start at guard with other guys kind of as expected around the, that area there. So uh, they're better with Bakhtiari, but I think the Packers will be fine. You know, maybe that game, what is that, week three around there early in the season, uh, 49ers, maybe that's the one that's like, okay, how would that offensive line without Bakhtiari handle that pass rush? So that's kind of one that's kind of – eye opener maybe a little more right now so that's pretty interesting um what else we got yeah the bills released jake from you see all these moves here uh again i went in this video just wanted to talk about the what's confusing people and the kind of the key points i did have i did have kind of a uh a list of guys that i yeah we thought we so veterans released you know cam newton we talked about that pretty damn surprising uh peyton barber which i thought could happen we talked about um, they could bring him back after everything settles. Like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, 
Uh, they could bring him back, or it could just be Jarrett Patterson, the undrafted rookie, who looked pretty good in preseason uh, as the third-string running back. So Peyton Barber could be out there for anybody that needs a running back. Bernardrick McKinney was released uh, yesterday by the Dolphins after they traded him earlier in the season. You would feel he's still got some talent. Um, I don't know if they bring him back after everything settles, but we'll, we'll see. I think he'll have a market. Um, yeah, Jacob Hollister was a little surprising. Well, I think that's one that could circle back, end up back back with the with, with his team, with the Bills. Like I mentioned, Pernell McPhee, Everson Griffin, I, I'm almost guaranteeing those guys are end up back with their team after everything I explained. Uh, any more veterans before I kind of get into the um, – yeah, the guys that were waived, I, I, it's kind of appealing to me. The guys that were waived uh, because they'll be involved in the claiming period. I mean, there's a long list of guys here. Young players, obviously, if you're waived, you're a young player, you're not a vet, um, with upside. So ones that stand out that I think teams could be going after. Uh, no particular order. The Chiefs waived Cornell Powell, that Clemson receiver. He's a little up there in age compared to the other receivers in the draft, uh, you know. But the Chiefs felt good about him. He's not really a speed demon receiver. Didn't really fit the Chiefs, so maybe that's why, you know, he's pretty good. Um, he's pretty good. He's really good along the sideline. Back shoulder king. I was calling him during the year. Uh, pretty strong after the catch as well. Um, a lot of receivers. The Texans moved on from Kiki Kute, and then he could be. I think somebody will get him off waivers. Powell, I can't say for sure. Somebody will. I think Kute will. Uh, Travis Fulgham was a bit of a surprising one for the Eagles. He was so good for them last year, but they got a new coaching staff. They added guys. They had quite a few guys. You know, Devontae Smith. Uh, you know, maybe younger, other younger guys from last year stepping up. Uh, but speaking of that, John Hightower was cut too. I liked him out of Boise State. He was kind of a one-trick pony, though. He was speed, very good, deep threat guy, catch and just run, um, you know. And he didn't really play that way with the Eagles. He dropped a little bit, of, you know, a couple balls, but they kind of gave up on, on him in a way too early point. Feels like they're rolling with J.J. Arcega Whiteside over Fulgham or Hightower uh, in Quest Watkins. I like what Watkins showed us, but Arcega Whiteside over those guys questionable in my opinion Hightower could have some takers um for sure you know the only problem was the drops will that continue if teams feel that way then they won't pick them up we talk about Fogum I think Fogum Kute get picked up um the Titans released the fourth round pick Des Fitzpatrick I did not like that pick at the time they traded up for him I had a uh, seventh round grade. I thought he could be kind of a steal in the seventh round or a sleeper in the seventh seventh round. Titan straight up the fourth round, get him. Uh, and that didn't work out. You know, I was talking about that on Twitter. I'm not a fan of. Tra I've never been a fan. I've said that way in the past too. I'm not a fan of trading up uh, in the third in the end day three. I should say. Um, you know, I explain that a lot. You know, I'm just never been a fan. If I was a GM, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it unless some crazy guy somehow slipped through and I just absolutely had to have him. I just don't see a scenario. Um, Tyrone Johnson of the Chargers, uh, early camp, real early camp this year. He looked real good. Like, okay, this guy might be receiver three. Could he catch Mike Williams? Uh, but then it just shows the talent of the Chargers receiving core, in my opinion, uh, because you got Keenan Allen, you know, star receiver and you got Mike Williams, but then Jalen Guyton really took off last year. was really good with Herbert. He plays Herbert ball. Well, I had Josh Palmer as one of the best fit picks of the draft because I think that's a deep ball receiver. Uh, for Justin Herbert, and then he ended up t taking off the second portion, second half of the portion of training camp pre slash preseason. Um, so he ends up being their fourth receiver. I thought they would keep Johnson. I kind of predicted that to happen. Uh, what video was that? Yeah, I did a big, biggest camp battle for every team. The Chargers was that receiver slot there. But I thought they would keep Tyron Johnson uh, as, um, as, as the fifth receiver there. So they, they caught him. That's a bit surprising. So people are wondering, is that one that they're going to let things settle and they're going to bring him back? Uh, no, because he's on waivers. You know, they some of these guys want to be brought back. Like it was reported that the Eagles want to bring back Fulgham for the practice squad. You know, I just don't think that happens. You have to go through waivers for some of these guys. So hopefully everyone understands that. Um, was there another receiver? No, no other receiver. Um, Christian Miller stood out. The Panthers cut him, and you may say, you know, he hasn't really done anything. That's, that's correct. You know, as a former Alabama standout and edge rusher, as an outside linebacker edge rusher, he never really fit the Panthers. He kind of got screwed over by the constant changes there of the Panthers' staff and scheme. He never fit that, and he surely does not fit that today. Um, so I would like for him, and they were kind of trying to work him in an off-the-ball position at one point, so he kind of just got unlucky there where he was. 
Um, for his case, you know, I wish he was kind of cut a long time ago. Um, so that was unfortunate. But I think a 3-4 defense where they're outside linebackers, other edge rushers, I think they should jump on Christian Miller. He's been underwhelming in terms of the production and snap department, but there's a reason for that that I just explained. So that is one that nobody's really going to be talking about, but I'm talking about there. Colts surprisingly released their rookie uh, fifth-round pick, Sean Davis. I liked him out of Florida. Um, he got a good amount of experience um, for free and strong safety. You know, And the Colts run a split safety scheme. I thought that made sense. Uh, he's a pretty good playmaker back, back there. You know, I didn't think he was anything spectacular. I, th I thought they drafted him where I thought he should go. I just kind of liked the pick there. Uh, wasn't like crazy value. So I was surprised that they moved on from him. They're, they're set with their starting safeties, obviously. Pretty good duo. Uh, but that was a little surprising. He could be a pretty good one for somebody to pick up. Uh, who else did I put down? The Bengals got rid of Michael Jordan, their, their guard, who hasn't worked out. But nobody has worked out in the Bengals' offensive line. We saw the Giants kind of valued Billy Price kind of high, somewhat in that type of trade. They went and got him. Teams believe, you know, even the Giants, the teams believe that they can kind of rework these offensive linemen from the Bengals uh, because the Bengals aren't doing a good job developing, teaching, coach slash coaching over there. Um, and I heard there actually was some calls on Michael Jordan. Um you know, just to see if there's a can we do a swap deal that was at one point. They kind of disappeared. They end up cutting them. Um, so I think Michael Jordan gets picked off off waivers. I, I would be, I would be surprised if he didn't. So him, Fulgham, those are the main ones that I'd be very surprised. Tyron Johnson as well. Um, Tyron Johnson from the Chargers, obviously the receiver. I think that's a big one. A lot of people are talking about that. We were talking about that on Twitter. Am I getting news here? Um, checking the news. Something with the Herndon, Vikings Herndon trade. Um, yeah, Vikings paying paying him only a portion of the deal of his contract. Um, yeah, I think another one, yeah, speaking of the Vikings, uh, A.J. Rose Jr. was kind of an no-name on draft, a guy from Kentucky, um, running back. He played very well uh, in preseason, very well. And the Viking, Vikings know they're running backs. They find guys undrafted. And they look so good, you know. They look so good when they play for them, and and I think they end up being good elsewhere too, for the most part. But they just had too many damn running backs, or so deep that they had to move on from them. And they would like them back at a practice squad. But uh, I've you don't need to see too many reps from a running back to know they're pretty good. Is he gonna be a starting running back? Is he a star? Absolutely not. But I think he was pretty solid. You know, I think a good mix of physicality and athleticism was hitting the hole. So uh, AJ Rose Jr. I think that's one. If somebody's looking for a running back three, maybe someone with a two. Um, uh, that is actually one to look out for as well. I mean, there's a long list of guys too. Uh, and then we saw, you see it listed there. Malcolm Butler was placed on the reserve retire list. We talked, we reported yesterday that, um, he was, there's a, a situation, personal situation where he's deciding, maybe deciding to retire. And it looks like the, it's going to be the case here. So the Cardinals, um, were already thin at corner, solid starting outside corners, uh, and that yeah, kind of further into that case there. So. That's pretty damn unfortunate. Hopefully, I'm not forgetting to talk about anything. But uh, there's a lot of there's a lot more than what I talked about here. I'm not going to go and read everything I put. So you really got to make sure you follow the Twitter here. But uh, to the questions, let me refresh this. Um, probably a bunch of questions that I'm not going to get to. Um, Let's see. What do you think the most surprising cuts that probably aren't going to get re-signed by their team soon? Like uh, I think it means Everson Griffin or Hoyer. Um, yeah, something we didn't actually talk about. John Brown. John Brown with the, you know, with the Bills last year, with the Raiders, um, signed by the Raiders this offseason. Apparently he requested to be cut, and, and the Raiders kind of granted that. Maybe they would have cut him anyways. Um, so that is a bit surprising how that all came about. Um and uh, so he's going to be available. So that's another veteran veteran guy. He's not going to hit waivers. He's a veteran uh, that is available. Maybe a team a team like the Saints. A team like the Saints possibly. Um, Chiefs. Moved on from Powell. Just fits that speed. Yeah, Ch Chiefs make some sense there. Could he go back to the Bills? They kind of got Sanders to replace him. Chiefs, Saints uh, kind of makes sense to me. That was a surprising one. Um any other veterans? There probably are, but there's just so much going on right now. Um, yeah, I, I that's the one that comes to the top of my head here. Uh, which what 
receivers that got cut today you think will actually get picked up on waivers and who are good fits for them? Uh, well, Brown, I just mentioned his fits, but he won't be waivers. You're talking waivers. Um, look at Fulgham. I look at Tyron Johnson. Uh, mainly those two I, I think definitely will be picked up. Um, I mean, the Chargers are going to want to get Johnson back for their practice squad, but I don't think he's going to make it there. Um, Vikings could be looking for receivers. Their, their, their depth is kind of lacking. Um, so I look out for them. Uh, look out, and the Chiefs are going to try to add one too. They may try to get Brown. The Saints, um, those those teams might try to get Brown, but they might dive into the waivers first. It's just the, the receiver needy to the Lions, of course. The Lions know they need receivers. I, you know, Dan Campbell mentioned something that, like, there's going to be like, the, what he mentioned basically meant we're going to dive into the waiver period. You know, and they got a pretty good priority there. Um, so they're going to, they're going to get after it there. So those receivers that I look out for Kiki Kuti and then John Hightower as well. Some of those receivers, um, Reed Sinnett, uh, from the dolphins. Yeah. People were surprised he was cut, but they're so upset with Tua and, and Jacoby Brissett. It's a fantastic QB too. Um, that, that what well, didn't surprise me at all. I think he can make, he looked pretty good preseason, but I think he makes it back to dolphins prior squad. Um, I believe he will. I believe he will. We'll see. Um, I mean, another court of Lions. Lions could possibly snake him, perhaps. Um, do you think Des Fitzpatrick, yeah, we mentioned him, him uh, will land anywhere? Yeah, it's definitely possible. It's tough because, you know, a team that loved him so much to trade up for him in the fourth round, he didn't make that team. Teams are going to be like, all right, he might not be good. You know, but they did take him in, in the fourth round. There was the rest of the fourth round, the fifth round, the sixth round, the seventh round for teams to want to take him. So there's chan my point is chances are there were gonna be other teams that liked him. You know, guys that even if they're surprise value picks, sleeper picks, you know, in the fifth, sixth, seventh round, the sixth and seventh, you know, they were kind of gearing towards going on draft. There's not a collection of teams that were interested because they didn't take him up to that point. So um First glance, you know, I would say no. He'd probably make it back to Titans practice squad. But after I just said that, kind of thinking out loud, that there were probably other teams that wanted to take him, uh, they might they might scoop him up. Do you think cutting Des Fitz, Fitzpatrick was a bad move? Um, drafting him where they drafted him and trading up was the bad move. Cutting him at this point, um, I, I think they probably chose the right guys, um, the best guys for their team. Uh, any chance Bernard McKinney can land in Green Bay? I won't rule it out, um, but I think they're more in a situation where Devondre Campbell and Chris Barnes are their starters. Um, so, you know, they would like to have McKinney, but, you know, do they sign him like, hey, you're probably going to be a backup. You know, how how is that going to be? I think teams that, because he does have a say. He's not a waiver guy. He's a veteran. So he, he does have, a, he has to agree to a deal. Um as well, so I the Packers probably back off anyways. They probably like their starters. Uh, it's possible though. Which veterans that were cut would you think will sign with the Bucks? <clears throat> yeah, the Bucks are working on a restructure on Mike Evans' contract, so they're they're interested in signing some guys. Um, the crazy thing is the Bucks are so talented. Like I can't find a hole on their roster. Uh, where I can figure out, okay, they're going for this guy. They probably can go for, you know, they could use some D-line depth. Their starting D-line's fantastic. They can use some depth, key rotation. So I'm almost thinking of the guys that were already out there. Kawan Short, Geno Atkins, who, you know, we thought at one point would sign with Seahawks. Uh, almost thought some of those guys uh, for the Bucks could they dive in? Uh, maybe do a save, you know, Jared Wilson was cut. Uh, Darian Thompson, I just don't see, I don't, you know, there's really no point. Maybe depth of the cornerback position, take some of these young corners. Uh, it's possible. That's a, it's a tough one to, for me to predict because I, I, you know, there's some teams it's pretty easy because, okay, they need this pretty bad. And this guy at that position is now available. Bucks got maybe the most talented roster in football. So it's pretty tough. What are the bears doing at cornerback? Yeah, they released Desmond Trufant. They released Artie Burns, and they waived rookie Thomas Graham uh, from Oregon. 
So all three of those things, a little surprising. They, what I talked about earlier in this video, that teams are kind of snaking around, moving, maneuvering around the rules of the NFL. They could be doing that too. Um, you know, now they're going to put guys. Who goes on the IR there for the Bears, though? That's the thing. Do they have any obvious guys at the top of my head? Um, you know, so could, basically what I'm getting to, could they bring one of those corners back after everything settles because they're not worried somebody else is going to sign them? It's a possibility. Do they dive into, you know, will Richard Sherman want to come play? Well, was his off the field issue settled, you know? Um, they're going to have to do something, though. You know, you bring up a good point because they're going to they're gonna have to do something. Um, you know, Jalen Johnson, Kendall Vildor is going to be the starters, and then they, 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 need some, they need some more help after that for sure. Yeah, maybe they liked uh, Rashawn Melvin. Rashawn Melvin was let go by, by the Panthers, just popped in my head, veteran guy there. Do they try to get somebody like that? Do they like some of the young guys that are out there? Do they circle back and bring back a Desmond Trufant or an Artie Burns? It's, anything's possible there. So um, I'm kind of where you're at, though. It's, it's a little confusing at the moment. It's tough to figure out who's going to be the Lions kicker. Yeah, they released both their kickers. Um, man, it just got really dark in this room. Uh, they, um, yeah, they released both their kickers. Nick Folk? Patriots, the Patriots move on from Nick Folk, so I, I, that's sure we're gonna go with Nick Folk. Uh, with the Malcolm Butler loss, do you think the Cardinals' moves should be in order to hold their playoff hopes? I feel like it was already one of their weaker. Yeah, we kind of talked about that. Man, a tough part about the Cardinals is they play, they want to play press man, and you know they're, you know, you take the whole league-wide corners. And then you make a list of the press man guys, and it's pretty small as it is. So now we're talking about guys that are just just the guys that are available. Like we talked about, uh, you know, Richard Sermon still out there if his off the field issue is kind of cleared up. I don't think it was that major of a one. I could be wrong. I don't have a stance on that, but um, but he doesn't. I don't. It doesn't fit. Doesn't fit well. You know, the Cardinals are almost in a position where it's not good, but. They're almost in a position where they play the younger guys, the underdog guys they have, because they added those guys for a reason because they fit. They actually, you know, could they, yeah, I mentioned Rashawn Melvin for the Bears. Could they do that? Could they pick up one of the guys the Bears let go? Chufant, Artie Burns, possibility. What other corners are let go? There wasn't a lot of corners out there that were let go. Um, yeah, corners, offensive linemen, solid quarterbacks, not a lot of solid guys at those positions let go. So, Pretty tough position, but like I said, yeah, they, um, let's see, he says, hyped up frequency, should get him, uh, I'm not really sure, I don't know if any of those guys should retire, who are we talking about here, um, yeah, I'm not really sure, um, like Watt should retire, I don't know if that's what you mean, I don't think so, uh, Will the Browns bring back Porter Gustin once he clears waivers? Was it just a procedural move? Um, I don't think it was a procedure move. Um, cause he's yeah, cause he's in waivers. I think they're. Yeah, I look out for. I'm trying to. I'm going through guys in my head right now. Um, could they bring back Olivier Vernon? I just thought of that too. I'd actually look out for Afedi Odenigbo who was actually on the Browns for a little bit at one point. He was on the Vikings, played pretty well in the Vikings. Stefanski was there. Now he's with the Browns. He got let go uh, by the Giants. It's a possibility there. Uh, but, yeah, they are a little thin on edge rushers now. So I think if they could get Gustin, ah, I think if they brought Gustin back, it'd probably be for the practice squad, though. I know people were – it was kind of promising to them, him, he was. So it is a little interesting. Uh, could they bring Vernon back? How did that end with them? You know, I, I, I think they could, but uh, Odenigbo, not a lot of edge rushers let go too, but here we got, got somebody mentioned with the Steelers. Uh, let me check my phone for the, uh, updates. Nothing new. It's slow. I picked the right time to record. Um, Cassius Marsh, Quincy Roche released. Yeah. I'm a little surprised about Roche. They might be set with what they got. That's tough though, because they don't have, they're not too deep. Not too deep, and it would be okay if you're kind of, you know, set. Because right away you list three big players, and you would think first glance, 
one of those guys, Ingram or Highsmith, has to be a backup. So there's your depth. That's pretty damn good depth. Would be true, but Ingram you use in different ways. You line them up different ways, which I would assume the Steelers do, where you would use Watt, Ingram, and Highsmith at the same time. So it's almost like you need more depth. So that is pretty tough. Um, Roche, could, they definitely could get him back for the practice squad. It's definitely possible. Uh, maybe they dive into what was released. Uh, maybe they want to pick up another veteran. It's, it's, it's interesting. You know, I don't have a firm answer there. Um, surprise Browns cut Marvin Wilson. Yeah. Uh, good on drafted free agent. The reason I liked Marvin Wilson was from his tape two years ago. I mean, that looked like he was dominant. He looked like a possible first round pick. And then a the guy that put on weight, got out of shape, uh, and did not look nearly as good in this past year is what resulted in him going undrafted. My thinking was, I think an NFL program can get him back to the previous year. I heard he didn't look too good, a little sloppy uh, on the field during camp as well. Um, so it didn't really end up being a surprise. It's just, un- it's a little surprise to me that somebody couldn't really get him back to. Well, it's only one team, but um, yeah, because he's got that talent in him. Um, so it's not that shocking. He's He'll end up on a practice squad. Um, Zeros only have four cornerbacks. You'd expect to target Callahan. There was some rumors about a possible um, trade there. I don't know if the I don't know if the Broncos trade him. Sherman is Zeros run a lot of man. I don't think they'll I don't think they'll bring. They're kind of like the Cardinals. I was just talking about the Cardinals. Um, they want press man guys, so it's, it's you know specific fits. You know, it's some of those guys I mentioned earlier, you know, is Melvin going to sign with the team? You know, Trufant, Artie Burns, now Artie Burns, you know, now available. Um, Savion Smith was let go by the Broncos. It's more of a depth guy. But maybe, yeah, they probably need a depth guy. What other linemen should the Giants go for, whether it's free agency or trade? Um, there's really none available, like usual. Um, talking free agency, because it's just that's how it is. The offensive linemen are so rare. Good ones are so rare. Um, they, they traded for Billy Price, uh, from the Bengals. Michael Jordan was released from the Bengals. It's a, it's a possibility. You know, they go for a guy like that. There's not too many available out there. Uh, and we're at the point where nobody really wants to trade their remaining offensive linemen. You know, we're at that, we're getting to that point. So it's tough to say Falcons offense line has been shaky. Yeah, it has been, um, yeah, I just brought up Michael Jordan, who struggled with the Bengals, but um, new new scenery maybe. Um, possibility. There's just a shortage on these guys. There's a big-time shortage. So I, that's why I think he'll be a popular, popular name um, in terms of the waiver claiming period. So we'll see. Uh, yeah, we talked about a little, a little about that earlier. A little surprising. Uh, maybe he doesn't fit the new staff. Detroit's no kickers. Yeah, maybe Nick Folk. We talked about that a little bit. Um, we talked about the Malcolm Butler Cardinals. Yeah, maybe they have to dive in and trade for somebody. I'm shocked they didn't pick up Steven Nelson when they had a chance. The Eagles did. I thought that was a fit. Surprised by that. They may be kicking themselves for that one. Um, could trade for somebody. Uh, corners are almost like offensive linemen right now. I I think from should make it to the practice squad. I don't think anyone's gonna pick him up. I'm not gonna guarantee that. Uh, yeah. Do you have edge in mind for the Browns? I just talked about this. Could they bring Olivia Vernon back? I would look out for a Fetty Odenic bow because, uh, he played for the Browns before he played with the Vikings. When Stefanski was there, it looked pretty good. Uh, he was released by the Giants. The possibility. I'm probably forgetting other guys, but that's kind of what comes to my mind on the spot seeing this. Should the Giants cut Booker and bring back Wayne Gallman? I don't think they do that. I wouldn't mind that though. I'm not a huge Booker guy. They could have both. Perhaps they could, they could go at both. Um, that's a possibility. Uh, where do you think the top of the free agents will go? To which teams? And we kind of talked about where I think where which where can go where. Who do the Bears target for corner? Uh, we kind of talked about that a little earlier. Another question. Um, we talked about which receivers I think should get claimed. Uh, yeah, Perriman's available too. It's on our receiver. Saints, maybe for Perriman. I kind of wanted them to sign on free agency. They had a chance to. They didn't. Talk about the Cardinals options. Not a whole lot of options. I'll come back after this video to Twitter when I kind of process who has been cut, which corners fit where, or which players, it doesn't matter who it is. Anytime I have a feeling on who can go where, I usually tweet it out. 
which position you know, the Broncos are another team where they're going to add guys, but it's tough to predict. Kind of was like talking about the Buccaneers because they're pretty, pretty balanced roster. Where there's like no holes where like they need that, you know. So that's um, D line depth. Edge depth, but they really liked how Jonathan Cooper looked for the rotation. You know, so it's tough to figure out with the Broncos. Why would the Dolphins drop McKinney? Um, Atlanta Roberts, they end up getting back, I think, after that point, and he recovered from the injury, and they, they feel comfortable with him. They also signed Duke Riley, so that'll be why we're really go. I like the Rams. Love the Rams. Ravens, I listed some landing spots the other day. Uh, Rams, Ravens really stand out to me. Um, I had a couple other teams. Jags, Panthers, they had the Panthers trade away Perriman. It was like, okay, so that when they signed Josh Bynes, right, they're going to use him. They moved on from him. They got other guys, but, yeah, the Panthers could be one here since they ended up moving on from both those guys. Um, I really like the Rams. I really like the Rams there, Rams, Ravens. Yeah, a lot of the Cardinals questions. We can talk more about this on Twitter. When I have some more uh, more ideas, but I, I, same with the Bears, Cardinals, Bears with the corners. Um, well, Jimmy Moreland was apparently injured at the same time, so we'll probably have more info on that in the future. Uh, I think that's probably why they list him as waived injured. Nobody probably picks him up. Maybe he makes makes it back around, and they can put him on some sort of list, practice squad. It's your personal favorite NFL player, and why? Doesn't have to do with the rosters, but I probably am a Vikings fan, so probably Harrison Smith, but on the team a long time. I always like appreciate, you know, the instinctive players, guys that just pre snap within five seconds or less, just all of a sudden like figure out, you know, the play and kind of let the teammates know that's kind of something he's known for. So I always appreciate that. His ability to play free, strong safety, and almost like a box position. So a lot of those things. Who would be the Titans starting right tackle? Yeah, when they drafted uh, Radunes, I would have said him, but they were working him in that guard. Uh, it's got to be Kendall Lamb then. It's got to be who they got from the Browns. Uh, I would think that's what it, what it has to be. Uh, why did the Broncos wave Seth Williams and Kendall Hinton and then trade Trinity Benson? Um, probably because, well, I mean, teams usually only keep five receivers, some six. So they kept they kept five. Five or six in there, top of my head. I'm trying to think, but they, I mean, they're they're pretty much set. I mean, the, look at the top four that they have, uh, but between Judy Sutton, Hamler, Tim Patrick. I mean, they're they're pretty set. I know Williams is a likable guy there too, but uh, I think they're set. Uh, it was some talk about Patrick getting traded. I never thought that, um, so I would have been surprised by that. What do you think the Bills are missing? Uh, no, they could get better at the other cornerback spot, but it's really thin on availability there. They're pretty ba- That's why they're a good team. They're pretty balanced. They're pretty good. They just need somebody to step up in the positions they have, but they have those guys to step up. And I'm talking about like running back position and the edge position. They kind of have those guys. Will they go out and do it now though? Um, a lot of Cardinals questions. We could talk more about this. Uh, but I met earlier in this, I mentioned some corners, um, yeah, I just, I saw this one right away. I mentioned that. So yeah, it was, uh, wasn't a four and a six going to the jets. Uh, but they got a fourth out of it. It's fantastic. Uh, we talked about Cam Newton early in this video. Uh, it's right. Good point. Crosby was let go. He's, he's, he's not the best tackle, but not, he's got upside. He's got some experience now. Um, that could be a popular one off waivers too. I heard there was some trade talk about him at one point. So with the shortage on available tackle, uh, offense linemen in general, that could be another one. How do you not trade them for anything? Uh, yeah, there's some teams that don't mind going and trading for a guy that's about to be cut, but I think most teams, you know, if I was a GM, I, I would never, if I felt like I was going to get cut or even the team kind of hinted that, I would never trade for that guy. That's just me. Um, you know, so I think the teams that are were willing to trade for guys are about to cut because they had to have them. They went out and got those linemen already, which left Crosby. Um, I think that the trade talk was probably just talk, not super, super recent. Maybe it seems like, we'll line this up, um, we'll swap picks. Maybe the Lions at that time didn't want to swap picks, or maybe the team didn't, didn't you know, we're, we're thinking about doing this, kind of backed out because they saw how everything was shaking out there. All that possible. Um, do you think the Cowboys get Cam? Right now, it feels like it because it's the only team thrown out there. You know, it's 
But if if no team was thrown out there, I'd probably see, say a team like the Texans maybe. But um, right now the Cowboys got to be leading the way. They could roll with just the two running backs. Um, they could add. They could add Peyton Barber. They could, you know, I mentioned AJ Rose, a sneaky one that got got to the waivers there. Um, Jordan Howard actually got cut by the Eagles as well. You know, a couple guys there that they they could add. Yeah, Howard actually would make sense too. You would stash him as a running back three though. But why he would make sense? He's a pretty good pass protector in my opinion. He can block. That that could be handy for them. Um, we'll see. Uh, let's see if any other questions came out. Uh, I don't think so. It looks like it. Um, yeah, so pretty wild video. I just kind of wanted to get on here and talk about, uh, like everything that was happening and, um, going on here. It's a, it's a really good reason to follow Twitter. Like, as you can see, nonstop all day. So that's why there was no video scheduled video. Cause it was all here all day. So, um, yeah, if you guys still have any questions, I, you know, I never ignore people on Twitter unless it's complete BS. Um, you know, sometimes I don't see everything these days, but, um, yeah. So if you, I didn't get to your question, you got more questions, go to the Twitter. It's a good spot to be link in the description comments, uh, for anything that you need. Uh, please like subscribe full NFL coverage here at the goat house. And I can't wait for in season contents right around the corner. It's good to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.